Okay, in this video we're going to start talking about something called entropy, which is new, and spontaneity, which is new. Um, these are concepts that are part of thermodynamics. What we're talking about relates to chapter 17 in your book, so if you have questions you can look there. I am not going to follow the notes at the beginning, I will go back and we'll do some practice problems at the end. So you may want to turn your packet over um, and just take notes on the back at the beginning and then we'll, I'll point you to the right slides when we do some practice problems. So in our third unit, I think, we studied thermodynamics and we learned that energy is conserved. And that's when we talked about delta H and we learned about enthalpy um, and calorimetry and how to measure enthalpy, which is represented by H. We talked about how energy can be changed from one form to another, but that it is conserved. Now that doesn't really help us decide whether a reaction or a process will happen without any outside intervention. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So what we're going to talk about here is the definition of the word spontaneous. This word here. And you have this on the first page of your notes in the second slide. A spontaneous process is a process that can proceed without any outside intervention. So let's think about what that means using some examples. Oh, why do these always happen? Okay, here we have, if we drop an egg, the egg is, and the egg breaks, that is spontaneous. Once you let go of the egg, it will fall and it will break. That process, the egg breaking after you let go, is spontaneous. It will happen, the egg's going to hit the floor and break at some point. What's not spontaneous, the egg is not going to put itself back together and go back into your hand. That reverse reaction, reverse process, will not happen without some sort of very special outside intervention. Let's look at another example. Let me try to keep that there. Here, I have a closed valve, a closed stopcock. I have gas here at one atmosphere. This, this gas B is in a vacuum. There's nothing in here. If I open this valve, the gas will distribute itself in between the two areas spontaneously. Once I open the valve, these gas molecules in A are going to move over to B without me doing anything to make that happen. In fact, if I open the valve, there's no way I can stop them. If I leave the valve open, they are never all going to move back to one side. That would be non-spontaneous. I would have to do something special to make them move back here into A. So once we open the valve, it is spontaneous that the gas that was in A will distribute itself evenly into B and be in both places. It is non-spontaneous, once the valve is open, to have all the gas go back and stay in A. That would not happen without outside intervention. Okay, sometimes spontaneous processes are spontaneous at one temperature and not another. If we have um, ice and the temperature is greater than zero, that ice is going to melt. Okay, that is spontaneous. It will spon if the temperature around its container is greater than zero, this process, the ice is going to turn to water. If, so it would be non-spontaneous for the ice to stay as ice if the temperature outside was greater than zero. If the temperature is less than zero, it is spontaneous for water to turn to ice. Without, if I put this flask down and the temperature outside in a, refriger, in a freezer and the temperature around here is less than zero degrees Celsius, this water will turn to ice. I don't have to do anything else, so that is spontaneous. It would be non-spontaneous for the water to stay as water if the temperature is less than zero. So sometimes spontaneity can depend on temperature. So spontaneity is not related to how fast something happens. That is, we studied how fast something happens. That's kinetics. That has nothing to do with whether or not it will happen without outside intervention. So kinetics is not, how fast something happens is not related to whether or not it is spontaneous. So something else to keep in mind is that spontaneous processes only occur in a direction that move them towards equilibrium. A process will not be spontaneous if it takes it farther away from equilibrium. So for example, if we have a piece of hot metal and we put it in some cold water, 
it will be spontaneous that the metal becomes colder and the water becomes hotter. It would not be spontaneous for the metal to get hotter and the water to get colder. That would be again, moving against equilibrium. Now since all processes move toward equilibrium, this is not enough. We want to try to determine now what processes are spontaneous and what are not. So we're going to consider some things and try to figure that out. So we're going to try to come up with a way to decide if something is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. And as we think about reactions, we can realize that many exothermic reactions are spontaneous. They happen without any um, outside intervention. Um, if, we, if we burn um, methane, if we burn CH4, which is my pencil, that happens. Once we light it up, it creates CO2 and H2O. If, <clears throat> if we react, we just learned this, HCl and sodium hydroxide and acid and a base, they will make water and a salt. These, hap these things happen without us having to do anything special. We put them together and they react. So they are spontaneous processes. They are also exothermic. They release energy. Exothermic. This up here, up here, this is a graph uh, of an exothermic process. We have our reactants here, our products here. Energy is released. So we could think that all exothermic processes might be spontaneous. Let's consider that a little bit further. So we're going to look at these three processes. Um, melting ice, melting is a phase change, that is spontaneous. If I, put, if I put some ice outside today, it's 49 degrees, that ice is going to melt, and that is endothermic. The ice will be taking the energy from the air to melt, but it will happen. I won't be able to stop it. So that is an endothermic process that is spontaneous. Um, energy transfer as heat, which is similar to what we just talked about. So if I have a cold, soft drink and I sit it in a warm environment, it will reach thermal equilibrium. It will become warmer because energy will be transferred from the air around it. That is endothermic. So that is also endothermic and spontaneous. I won't be able to stop that from happening. It will absorb heat from the air. This third example you did when you created your hand warmers earlier in the year, dissolving ammonium nitrate in water, that <clears throat> happens spontaneously. You can't Once you put the ammonium nitrate in water, it dissolves, and it is endothermic. It ta we, we found that that one did not, would not make a good hand warmer because it absorbs heat. So it is endothermic and spontaneous. So these are three examples of things that are endothermic and spontaneous. So clearly, being exothermic is not enough reason to label something as spontaneously going to happen. We need another definition. So we're going to learn about a new property that is a state function. It is going to be called entropy. Its symbol will be S. And loosely defined, I'm going to say it means thermal disorder. We're going to define it more specifically in a few minutes. So a spontaneous process for us will be one which results in an increase in the entropy, or the thermal disorder, of the universe. So this is where we're going to pick up in our next video.